Hello everyone and welcome back again to my channel. If this is your very first time here, you are highly welcome. My name is Gloria, I'm a Canadian-based YouTuber and I create content around my life here in Canada as a new immigrant. And I also share my experience with you so that you can also benefit as well. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing that right now and turn on your notifications so that you will be the first to know when I make new videos. And to my amazing subscribers, you guys are awesome. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and guys sit back relax grab something to drink because in this video today we will be talking about something interesting and we're starting right now welcome back so a number of persons have reached out to me and asked me to make a video about um, banks here in Canada and the truth is I actually did make one video before, but uh, for some reason it got deleted from YouTube. I don't know what happened, but I'm making another video, which is this one now, and I'm hoping that you would enjoy it. Canada has five top banks. Uh, we have the TD Bank, we have Scotia Bank, we have RBC, we have CIBC, and we also have Bank of Montreal. The short form for that is BMO. The good thing I like about Canada banking system here is that the banks open uh, for a longer um, duration of hours as compared to where I come from back home in Africa. Like the, the, some of the banks can open, can work up until like eight o'clock in the evening. Some are open up to seven o'clock some six some five o'clock it just depends on the institution right um i remember when i first came into canada and i i banked with one of the the top five banks and the good thing is that when i was done with school maybe around five o'clock i could still dash out to the bank at 6 p.m so that's one good thing that i love about canada so in this video i'm going to be sharing with you how you can set up a new bank account here in canada uh, what documents you might need or require and yeah, let's just get and started right now So I'm gonna start with um, the very basic types of accounts. We have a checkings account. We have a savings account We also have investment account, but let's start with just the basic ones. So the checking account is just like any um banking account that you might have had in your own country. Um, a checkings account is just one of the basic accounts you have to set up while you are a new immigrant or any other Canadian has um, here in Canada. With your checkings account, you can actually issue and write out checks to people and you also allows you to uh, accept direct deposits into your account. So what that means is if you're currently working, your employer can actually make your payments into your account directly uh, as a direct deposit. Your checkings account, when you set it up, they also the banks will also issue you um, a debit card. And with your debit card, you can use that at the ABM, which is the ATM machine, as we popularly uh, know it to be from back home and from your own country maybe. And uh, the truth of the matter is um, there are different banks, they offer different perks. So you need to check in with your bank to find out what they offer you. I know when I first came in as an international student, um, I set up an account whereby I had unlimited um, transactions on my account. I didn't have to pay a fee. And uh, so you might want to check in with the banks you're setting your account with to find out if there is a fee to set it up. I know for newcomers, there usually is no, there isn't no fee, any fee, sorry for my English. There isn't a fee for setting up a, a bank account, but you have to check in with the banks to be sure and uh, find out what perks that they do offer. And I must say this because somebody has asked me this question. Um, you don't need, um, um, an amount to set up an account before you are able to set up an account you, there isn't an amount that you need to have before you are able to set up an account at any bank i haven't heard that any banks will require that you um, make a deposit before you are able to set up an account um, i've not heard that happen so no you don't need uh, money to open an account with any banks here in canada Okay, the second account that I will be talking about is a savings account. Now, a savings account is just, a, just as the name sounds, it's just a savings account where you can save your money for that good thing that you want to buy 
um, a savings account will also give you interest, a little bit of interest, not a lot. Um, it could be as high as um, up to 2 to 3%, but the rates are not really the best right now. So you might not get a lot from um, setting up uh, a savings account, but it's always a good thing to have a savings account because with your savings account, you can always um, transfer funds from your check-ins to your savings um, using your bank's uh, mobile app. So that's one thing that you sh should know about um, the savings account. So stay tuned. I'm going to be talking about the investment account. Just before we begin to talk about the investment account, I just realized that I didn't mention how you can go about setting up that account and what documents you require. So let's talk about that now before I forget. So you can actually walk into a physical branch to set up your account, or you can do that online. I believe all the banks should have that ability to for you to do that online. But you know what? You can always do a Google search to find out the address of the branch or the bank that is close to your address to figure out what times they are open and what times they are closed. And you can also search for their phone numbers too by doing that Google search. Um, call the brand to find out if you can book an appointment. They would tell you what is available at that particular day on that particular day and time that works for you and for them if they have somebody available. Um, usually an advisor would actually um, be setting up that account for you. Um, I haven't seen any teller i don't know i don't know how the other banks work but i know for the banks that i have been at um, you would need to to call in because of this pandemic right now this is march 2021 as of the day i'm making this uh, making this video and i know fully well that um, most times you always have to call um, to book an appointment with an advisor so when you do that and you already have your appointment and you go into the branch um, they would require your driver's license if you already have one or your international passport. They will require your social insurance number. They will need your name, your address, your phone number and um, things like that because they will need all of that to put that on your system so that they can have you as a live person, um, as a bank um, customer in their own system. So remember to take along those documents, your international passport if you have your international passport if you have a driver's license ensure you go with it because they will need that to verify your address and if you don't have any other thing like if you don't have a driver's license at this time please go with something that has your address on it it could be um, a phone bill it could be your rent your lease lease agreement um, it could just be maybe your hydro bill but just something that has your name and your address on it they would need that the advisor would need that in order to put the information on the system the other thing i didn't mention earlier on guys is that also when you come into the country as a new immigrant you're also given a credit card sometimes depending on the institution you have to apply for it and others too um, they just give that to you as an incentive for being a newcomer in canada the credit card, just as the name sounds, it's for you to be able to, one, build credit. I always make this number one priority. It helps you to build credit. You can also use that when you need to buy things that you don't necessarily have the money to pay for. So things that maybe you want to buy um, a laptop for school if you're an international student. Um, if you want to buy a bag, if you want to buy your textbooks, um, if you want to pay for other things and you don't have the money, you can use your credit card uh, to make those payments. I always recommend that you pay off your credit card within the 21 days that is stipulated or stipulated on your um, credit card agreement because within that period of time is called a grace period. When it's past that grace period of 21 days, you start to pay interest. And trust me, guys, the interest on a credit card is very high, as high as 19.99%. So always when you make a payment or purchase from your credit card, ensure that you're making that payment back before the end of the 21 days so that you don't have to pay um, interest on it okay and um, if you're making purchases outside the country for example in the us i just remember that now um, there's always um, a conversion um, fee which is about 2.5 percent I believe this is standard for all um, institutions. You might have to check that information, but I know uh, I have banked with three different institutions and they have the same uh, information for all the credit cards. So 
you always have to pay 2.5 percent now what that means is if you're buying something at the rate of 200 dollars in the ux maybe it's a hair you're buying from the us as a lady or a shoe or something you are going to pay 2.5 percent on top of that um, on your credit card so you need to remember that while you are making your purchases so if you have any questions about what i just said let me know in the comment section are you confused about the credit card and how it works let me know in the comment section and i'll answer your question for you if you have any questions about the check-ins and the savings account let me also know in the comment section now i'm going to be talking about hmm, the very complicated uh investments accounts i know i need another video to talk about this but i'm going to talk a little bit about what the investment accounts are so the investment accounts you can invest in things like stocks and um, bonds in gic's guaranteed investment certificates or in mutual funds now like i said earlier on this is a little bit complicated but just Take it easy and grab the little you can grab. If you do have a particular question, let me know in the comment section. I might have to make a complete video about investment account. And now as a disclaimer, please, this video is not sponsored. And this video, I'm just sharing my own experience as an immigrant to Canada. When I first came in here, I'm sharing those experiences with you. And I'm all, I have also worked in two different banks here in Canada. So. That experience alone is enough for me to provide that to you. And I'll, I'm also a financial advisor at the bank. So it's also good that I'm also sharing that information for you. And I'm not going to tell you where I bank so that you don't come and look for me. <laughs> I'm just joking. So with investment account, like I said earlier on, you can invest in things like stocks and shares and bonds. And there are different um, vehicles that you can use to um, to in, to um, put money in. So, for example, you have a registered retirement um, savings plan. You also have a tax-free savings account. Let me start with the tax-free savings account because that's much more easier. A tax-free savings account is short form for TFSA, and as the name denotes, is a tax free account whereby you don't have to pay taxes on the money you have in that account you earn interest when you invest in things like um, gic's guaranteed investment certificates or in mutual funds now mutual funds means that you're investing in the markets so if the markets do well you earn money if the markets don't do well you lose money so the financial advisor will explain all of that to you and he will let you know what is okay for you in terms of different factors that they would explain to you. But know that with the mutual funds, you get to earn a little bit of money uh, compared to other investment um, certificates like the GICs, for example. The retired savings plan is what a lot of persons would have when they start working um, in order to start saving for their retirement in the future because you don't want to retire at the age of 65 or 70 and not have enough money that you have saved for yourself. So start saving when you start working. I always recommend that uh, when you come into Canada and you've started working, start up an RSP account so that you can start investing money for yourself. And a good thing about the RSP is that with the RSP, it helps you to reduce your tax liability so that when you're when it's time for you to pay your taxes, you don't have to pay a lot of money because you're making contributions to your RSP. And please know that with your tax-free savings account and your registered savings plan, these are all registered um, plans with the Canada Revenue Agency, so with the CRA. And they always often have contribution limits um, every year so you don't want to go over your contribution limit so for example if your contribution limit this year for a tax free savings account is six thousand dollars don't go over the six thousand dollars and there is also a maximum for both um, registered for both plans your tax free and your rsp please don't try to go above the contribution limit because if you do that you'll be paying an extra 1% penalty on top of the extra money that you put into those accounts. 
I am not going to explain more about this today because like I said, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I'll answer that question for you. But most importantly, your financial advisor will be able to explain this in detail um, at their respective um, institutions, okay? And I'm trying to think what else that I've written here um, to tell you guys. Uh, so I just want you to know that, um, like I said earlier on the information that I'm passing across is information that is readily available and accessible to anybody by just doing a Google search. I'm honestly speaking, if you search any of the banks, the top five banks in Canada and you type banking in Canada, for example, or you type, how do I get a, uh, a registered account in Canada? It would just pop up a lot of information. If you have kids, you want to start um, an RESP, which is a registered education savings plan for your children, whereby you can save money and the government also gives you um, an incentive at, on top of what you contribute every year. So I'm not going to tell you what that is. Also speak with your financial advisor. So I'm going to end this video because it seems as if this video is going to be too long and I, and I didn't intend for it to be too long. So please, guys, I'm so sorry I went overboard. If there's a particular question you have for me, let me know. If you're new in Canada, let me know. If you've opened a bank account, if you had any issues, let me know in the comment section. I'd like to hear from you. Please, as usual, if you like, like this video, if you enjoyed watching it, uh, give this video a thumbs up. And guys, please share my video to anyone who you think will be interested in watching this video. And uh, what else, what else, what else? share like subscribe leave me a comment and don't forget don't forget don't forget to turn on your notification so that you will be the first to know when i upload new videos so guys i'm going to end this video now and until i see you in my next video stay safe and god bless